Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ben Sokos. I'm a program manager at the festival. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the directors of the film with some uh, special guests to also introduce. Uh, please join me in welcoming Fenton Bailey and Randy Marbato. Uh,
talk a little bit about sort of the, uh, the process of putting together uh, an exhibition around his work and sort of uh, how you address these things that were so controversial uh, 30 years ago, let's say, or 20 years ago, and how, uh, how you're approaching them to sort of re-engage an audience with them now. Yes, well, we tried to follow Maplethorpe's lead insofar as he spoke and you heard in the film that for him, his vision was the unifying factor among portraiture, still life, sex pictures. So we wanted to show that whole range, also play with the dualities, and we had this interesting situation, and we embraced the situation of doing concurrent shows, one artist in two museums. They, had to, they have to be two different stories, but still um, about the same career. So that really allowed us to explore that duality, and um, I know that mirrors what the filmmakers did and what Edward said. So that was um, a really, uh, it, it allowed me to look at the artist and the work in lots of different ways. Excellent. I just have one more that I'm going to open up to the audience. But uh, what I love about the film is this exploration of his ambition and sort of his uh, his desire to be there and be out there as a star. And I just wonder if, if you want to speculate, uh, Edward, do you want to speculate, me or, or the filmmakers, uh, about if he had lived and was in this age of social media and selfies and everything, what, what do you think he'd be doing? Like, what, what, would, what would he contribute? <laughs> that seems to be a popular question. <laughs> You know, surprisingly enough, I haven't given that too much thought. Um, but Robert was someone that was always trying to keep up with something new. I mean, uh, you know, photography was still very basic and shooting with film, digital hadn't even happened yet. But, you know, he was uh, starting to turn on to color and trying to experiment with that and uh, trying to expand uh, his It's me. Um, I think Robert, uh, could, and, it's, and it's well documented in the film, how much he loved to be the center of attention and he wanted uh, to be famous. I mean, there's, there's, there's no debating that. So social media is, is an incredible tool to do that. So I don't know, I'm sure Robert wouldn't be on his phone tweeting and on Instagram, but uh, people that worked in the studio, perhaps myself and the others, would probably be doing that for him. And, and you know, promoting his career in, in contemporary culture. But what about um, a selfie stick? My models. I'm sure it really interesting. <laughs> So I'd like to open up to questions from the audience, uh, if, if folks have them. Just, yep, please all go back. Did everybody hear that? Uh, I'll quickly repeat. Uh, she, she, the, the audience member, uh, just thanks, thanks you to the film for uh, holding up the mirror and confronting the confronting people uh, if it's necessary. And to Edward, the question is: uh, were, were you privy to the last meeting between uh, your brother and your father? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the last meeting was when uh, I would say uh, probably late 1988. Maybe it was early 19. Let me conclude this, is that I came and was working with Robert for, uh, a, from 1982 to 1984, and then I left for a little period of time to start, start my, jump start my own career. I came back in late 1986, 87, and at that time, um, Robert was not ready. I mean, he was quite ill at this point, but he was not ready to have, for, to have that discussion with my family and my, and my parents. So it was an incredible burden on me. So 
be in New York and pretend for a good year that I was still living on the West Coast because there was no way I wanted to go home and see my parents, look them in the eyes, and then ask me about Robert and knowing that he was dying and not being honest with them. So um, that lasted for a good year. Now, eventually, it became evident that things were getting worse, and Robert called me into his room one day and said, uh, and he's like, I think it's time uh, to let the family know. So I had already buried another brother a couple years earlier, so I decided to call my sister Nancy, who you saw in the film, and I said, Nancy, Robert's got AIDS, he's not well, he's dying, and if you could do me a favor and meet with mom and dad. And uh, she did, and reported to me how that went. I mean, it was a very sort of emotional experience for, for them. I wasn't privy to that. However, it was my responsibility to have my mother and my father come into the city, into 20, his 23rd Street, uh, loft uh, to visit with him. Um, my mother w was quite ill at that point. She was in a wheelchair on oxygen. Um, but they came in. They got a car, I got a car service. They came in. They, I brought them up. And Robert was very nervous. I mean, uh, but even at that point, I have to tell you something. He was so proud of what he had accomplished. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to sort of almost rub it in my father's face. <laughs> Uh, it's very, very difficult uh, for me to, to say that, but um, that's just the way the character that Robert was. I mean, he was just a very, very proud individual, and he wanted to show how accomplished he was, and the beautiful walk he had, the beautiful uh, collection of Italian glass. I mean, it was an awkward, awkward situation, as you all can imagine. There wasn't a whole lot of talk about uh, life and death. I mean, that was never really subject that our, our family was open to discuss, but, um, you know, it happened, and, uh, you know, I, I had to be the one to call my parents on, on March 9th and tell them that Robert had passed. Um, my mother was particularly upset and crying, having had now had two sons die, and um, several months later in May, uh, at the Whitney Museum was Robert's memorial service. So I had my parents come to that. Um, that was on a Monday. And uh, that Thursday, my mom passed away. So my mother was a very uh, strong individual. And she had to see that through. So I think once that door, that book was closed, and um, she was at peace with mom's death, she let go. We have for one last question, I think, so Jim. Um. I want to compliment the filmmakers for the maturity of this work. We've seen your work previously, but it, you, this is a very serious documentary through your filter of pop culture. And so kudos to both of you. I lived at 20... I lived at 26 Bond Street, so this is all very personal to me and complicated watching it. But I wanted to ask Randy and Fenton, what did you learn about Robert or yourselves in the process of making this film? Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And coming from you, it's, you know, um, it's very touching. Um, learned a lot. And to be honest, uh, we knew about Robert Maplethorpe and his work. I, I felt quite ambivalent about him and it. But we learned, I, I said, just speak for myself, I learned that even though he's an artist who used photography, I feel ultimately he's a documentarian. And I see him as an artist who's a documentarian. And I think came to know that during the course of making the film. And I think that accounts for why we feel so passionate about this subject. And the only other thing that for me to mention is I, I think as we do in our films is we try to take our cues from the subject. <coughs> and we try to make film what is the film that Robert would make about himself? You know, it's his pictures, it's his words. And we tried to do it in a way that was engaging, but also not fancy, not a lot of tricks or not a lot of, so that you could really see the pictures, just see the pictures. Not a lot of zooms, not a lot of details. Just present the work. So it's very, sort of, in some ways, very plain, austere, or minimal in the way I think his work 
was. And weirdly for me, um, and this, I don't know if this will make sense, but Robert Maple, I, I kept thinking of Tammy Faye making this film. As <laughs> someone we made a film of many years ago, but the thing about our film, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, was it was all about judgment and not judging others. And I remember at the beginning of this process, having very conflicted feelings about Maplethorpe, his work, his, who he was, and, um, and I came away really admiring his honesty. His, he just was, he put it all out there completely. And, and it, was ten, it was just thinking, I don't know, I kept thinking about Tammy Faye and, and, and how, how she might, what she would think of Robert Maplethorpe, and I think she would really like it. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh,